In this module, we look at how to use cell ranges. Whenever you're using Excel seriously, you'll be working with pretty large spreadsheets with thousands, tens of thousands, and even hundreds of thousands of rows. Uh, so in those cases, it is not possible sometimes to refer to individual cells as we perform our operations, and we need to use what are called cell ranges. Let's see with an example. Okay, so let's say you went to a store or you've got the details here of some products that you bought. So you bought these four products for these particular prices. And in cell C5, you want to write a formula that computes the sum of all of the values above it. Right? Of course, we want to write a formula. We don't want to perform the computation ourselves and put it. Because if we do that, then what is Excel doing? We are just using Excel like uh, like a you know like a document where we are just putting in stuff there which we have computed Excel should do the work so it makes sense that we should write a formula okay so uh, based on what we have already learned we might write a formula like this equals C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 and of course that would give us the correct result 2505 okay now what if instead of 4 there were a hundred values what if there were a thousand values or a hundred thousand values then obviously this approach to writing the formula won't cut it okay of course you might have guessed already that there is an Excel function to do the job so you can do this you can say equals sum so sum is the Excel function that will do the job and we could say sum C1 comma C2 comma C3 comma C4 but that doesn't make any sense because what if we had a hundred values but the beauty is in Excel you can specify a range of cells so you can say equal sum and within parentheses you supply the range that you want to add up the range here is C1 to C4 so right all the way from C1 to C4 add it up and you indicate that it's a range by putting the colon right so when you say C1 colon C4 you're saying take all the cells from C1 to C4 and that's my argument and when you say sum you're saying okay add up all of those values right now don't make the mistake of confusing the range with the sum range just says it's a range of cells what you want to do with the range depends upon what function you use in this case we are using the sum function therefore we get the total of the values the sum of the values in the range Let's look at another example. Okay, so we've got some values here in uh, in the range B2 colon E2, right? This time the range is horizontal. Last time the range was vertical. And we want to do some operation like summing the values within uh, the range B2 colon E2. So of course we can write a formula equals sum B2 colon E2. And of course right now we have not specified exactly into which cell this formula goes, but that doesn't matter. The result is still going to be whatever the sum is right so here we are putting it into f2 and therefore the result is going to be 1000 which is you know 200 plus 100 plus 400 plus 300 is a thousand okay and just to clarify we are using the sum function of course the equals tells us that this is a formula and b2 colon e2 is the argument that we are supplying and it's a range b2 colon e2 and of course when we are indicating a range we are indicating a range of contiguous cells right you cannot have a range in which the cells are broken up you can't say I want the range from a1 to a5 and then from a15 to a20 that's not one range that's two ranges right so a range always indicates a contiguous set of cells contiguous meaning they're all connected there's no break okay uh, so that's what the function look like looks like so once again the function name is sum and as usual like we discussed with the max function we use the parentheses and within the parentheses is one argument this is not two arguments this is one argument because if you had two arguments you would have a comma separating them right so this argument is b2 colon e2 which is the set of contiguous cells starting from b2 going up to e2 so which is b2 c2 d2 and e2 okay so let's do some practice so write a formula in D4, okay, which is D4, using the sum function to find the sum of the cells 
B2, C2 and D2. Okay. So again, pause the video, write your answer and proceed then to see if your answer was correct. Okay. Of course, the answer is uh, sum B2 colon D2 and of course, you have to say equals sum B2 colon D2. Okay. So you may think, well, why am I putting the sum here? Why not here? Well, typically, we would probably be putting the sum in E2, but just to show you that it doesn't matter, I'm putting it in D4. Okay. So that's one example. Uh, so let's look at this. Uh, write a formula to calculate the sum of the highlighted range. Okay. And I'm not specifying where you're putting it because it doesn't matter. Once again, pause the video, write your answer and continue. Okay. Of course, the answer is equal sum C2 colon F2. This is a contiguous range, continuous range without any break and therefore you would say equal sum C2 colon F2 no matter where you're putting it. Okay. So again, how will you refer to the highlighted range? Right. So here we are not talking of a formula. I'm just saying if you had to refer to this range in some formula, how will you refer just to the range itself? Okay. So what you're you're not putting this into any cell. This is just the name of the range. Okay. So once again, pause the video and just write the name of the range of the highlighted cells. Of course, it is B1 colon B4 because these are the cells. The starting is B1, ending is B4. So the range is B1 colon B4, right? There is no equal to or anything because this is not a formula. This is just the name of the range. We are not putting this by itself into any cell. We would not. And if we did, it would not make any sense. But we might use this as part of some formula. Okay, something more for you to think about. Here I am going outside the box. I am actually going out of the range of what we have covered. Okay, how do you think you will refer to this highlighted range? Okay. Admittedly, we haven't spoken about this till now, but I just want to give you a challenge to uh, you know, stretch your brains a little bit. So again, uh, pause the video. Think about what might be the way to refer to this range and then continue the video. Okay. Now, if you had said that the answer is C2 colon F4, you would be 100% correct. Right? Because after all, when you have a range, you are actually specifying the top left corner of a rectangular region and the bottom right corner of that rectangular region. So in Excel, whenever you're talking of a range, you're actually talking of a rectangular region and you specify the top left and bottom right. It's just that 99.9% .9 of the time, your range will be either a vertical set of cells or a horizontal set of cells. Right? But there would be some occasions when you get ranges like this which are truly rectangular, meaning they have rows and columns. Okay? Most of the time your range will be just a single row or a single column. Okay? But this is how you specify a range. So this is just to, uh, to cover the base in case you encounter ranges which are truly rectangular. Okay? So again, just as I said, a range need not just span a single row or a column. It can be any rectangular region of contiguous cells. They all have to be continuous. You cannot have any breaks here. Okay. Of course, just like the sum function worked on ranges, the max function also works on ranges. So you could have written here max B2 colon E2 and you would get the maximum value in that range. So this is what I said when I, uh, I meant when I said, well, what if this range was max B1 colon B1 million, right? So it could be B1 colon B1 million, in which case you're talking of the range of 1 million cells in the column B from the first to the 1 million throw, okay? So when you have ranges, you then have the possibility of referring to huge number of uh, values and compute, performing computations on them, okay? So here you're saying max B2 colon E2 and the max function just like the sum function works on ranges as well. Okay. Some other simple functions, of course, I've already mentioned there's a min function which computes the minimum value. 
there is the average function which computes the average of a range so you've got a range here c1 colon z1 whatever and you compute the average of the range then there's the square root function which computes the square root notice that the square root function just takes a single argument okay whereas uh, functions like uh, average and so on can will take multiple arguments and then you can compute the power of a function right so you want to compute 2 raised to the power 5 you can do power 2 comma 5 or power b3 comma c4 so you can do all of these things so these are just some commonly used functions and as I've already pointed out Excel has literally thousands of functions and uh, you know you don't have to memorize the names of all of these functions I'll show you later that within Excel you can actually look up and find the function that you need whenever you require to use a particular function. So Excel provides us numerous functions. Okay, so in the following three slides, just write the formulas without worrying about which cell they go into. Okay, so write a formula to sum the highlighted range. So again, pause the video, write your answer. It's not going into any particular cell, so you just write the formula and then proceed. Okay, so there are several ways in which you could have written it, but I think the most succinct way to write it is sum C2 colon F2. Right, so that's the easiest that's the easiest way to refer to the entire range. Of course, you could have written equals C2 plus D2 plus E2 plus F2, but you know that that's just meaningless, right, at this point. It's correct but it's not what you should be doing at this stage right in fact you can also write some c2 plus d2 plus e2 plus f2 but that's again fairly foolish because you're saying it's like saying sum of 10 right because c2 plus d2 plus e2 plus f2 is one value and then you're saying sum of that value there's no sense in saying sum at all you could have just said c2 plus d2 plus e2 plus f2 right so the best way to write this is sum c2 colon F2 okay so now write a formula to compute the average of this highlighted range so again pause the video and continue once you're done okay now based on what I had mentioned earlier you know that there is a function called average and all you have to do is say average C2 colon F2 